Hi, and welcome back to another episode of The Public Law with Bo and Tammy right here on No Borders Radio at noborderswithradio.co.uk. And we're also simulcasting tonight on tiernasur.com. How are you, Bo? Okay, I'm well. How are you? Good. It's been a hectic week. Yep. Um, you know, we've been seeing a lot of Judas. A lot of Judas. Judas among us. Absolutely. And um, sadly, we're watching these things play out with um, Casey Kasem this week. Uh, he's been turned on by Judas. His own daughter has turned on him for that bag of silver. Uh, we watched a recent update come in on Dean Clifford. And... Um, it looks like he's been amongst Judas. Uh, I was commenting on a post earlier, you know, of course maintaining that there's no evidence of any harm whatsoever. And then, of course, a uh, commentator or whatever you call it says, well, he said he was violent. Well, I don't have any evidence at all in any way that Dean Clifford has been violent with anybody and until that comes through the presumption is that he has never harmed a human being and he's being turned on ironically by those that have been in his camp that got tired of helping out humanity it looks like and um, again you know I've been cannibalized I don't know how many times by the same types of individuals. Well, first of all, it should be made clear that Dean Clifford is not our process. It's no. It's not. Uh, but on the other hand, perhaps he does or, or he has exposed a lot of the corruption going on from his own experiences. Absolutely. And no, he doesn't adhere to the public law. He doesn't adhere to our process. He's doing something entirely different. But that doesn't mean that he's guilty of anything. He's still... I, I've seen no evidence that he's harmed a human being. And that's that's what we're here for. I don't care who anybody is. If they're innocent, they're innocent. And um, No, I mean, I point out that his process is not ours and that uh, why some of the things that he is doing and saying on his uh, lectures w were wrong, okay, and I received a lot of scorn for that, but it's only because, you know, I, I had to do that so people would have information, you know, to make a better informed decision. And, oh, there's not a lot of people out there that uh, are are really close to what we're doing because they all seem to, in one shape or another, end up uh, pleading back on to the daddy state, and um, that's that's exactly what we're not about. Right. Okay. We're for government, but we're for our own government patronizing our own house not this criminal uh, enterprise yeah the confederacy uh you know that has had world dominion since 1941 and you see what kind of a mess of things that they're making all right but it's a very tricky thing to pull out of the system completely it's 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 not you know it's not something you can do by filing their paperwork for one thing all right if you're, com you know, uh, filing lawsuits and complaints in their courts, you're patronizing the system. So you're just there as another pawn to behest of that uh, banker sitting up there in the black dress, um, you know, so he can use you as a negotiable instrument and use you to offset their congressional bankruptcy. Right. That, uh, that... That judge by title, he's not a judge at all. He's an attorney, but he's uh, 
he is the banker. He's he's like the uh, he's they're an army for Congress. They're an army for offsetting congressional bankruptcy using human beings, you know, in the act of human trafficking and as we evidence genocide. So if you want to keep patronizing that thing and calling it your government, that's what you're patronizing. You're patronizing uh, the genocidal activities of uh, psychopaths. Well, my concern is watching this play out with those that are turning on Dean Clifford were following that process. They were following Dean Clifford, and this guy had maintained on his um, whatever, his pink slip or whatever you want to call it. I quit uh, spiel on there. Was that, you know, he was indeed in it for the money. He's not happy because he wasn't being paid. Um, and then, all in all, he's informing on Dean Clifford, and he's maintaining that Dean Clifford has all these guns. Well, that's not harm. That's not evidence of harm. Dean no. Clifford had a commercial grow-up. Okay, that's not evidence of harm. And all of these things, there's no evidence that Dean has harmed a human being, and, and to watch him be rolled on by his own camp is, is just so sad. That's all the public law is about. It's about getting back to the fundamental here in that you can only have sovereign immunity if you don't harm a human being. None of these Congress critters have immunity because they have all been engaged uh, in perpetuating genocide. And human trafficking. Every single court case... Because it's under the 1933 bankruptcy, under conservatorship, every single court case, family court, probate court, criminal court outside of having violated any public law, is all evidence of human trafficking. It's also evidence of espionage, collecting and maintaining information to aid and abet a foreign government. Now, what people are patronizing, what, what citizens are patronizing is a foreign government that does not have their interests at heart as evidenced, evidenced in the 1947 National Security Act. That does not refer to state security. That does not refer to any public act in, in accordance with human safety and human well-being. Yeah, so we've got a bunch of news here to kind of illustrate that point specifically. And in our lawsuit against the federal state, we went through all the painstakingly long, drawn-out steps, although it's nothing like uh, <laughs> what you get wrapped up you know, within their courts and uh, their attorney product work doctrine, keeping you in the system in the loop for 10, 20 years before you ever get your 0.82% payout at the end of the day. No, but uh, what we did uh, is we won, you know, uh, via the original ecclesiastical law, not the perverted ecclesiastical law that these attorneys in black dresses claim to be operating under. Because they don't end themselves as anything other than attorneys and bankers. Right, and a judge is actually by the action. A judge is bound by judicial canon. And a judge simply defined under judicial canon. And that boundary is one who views evidence and rules accordingly. Attorney work product doctrine allows the removal of evidence off of the court record and in its place now they've replaced it with this uh, defined notion of fact, F-A-C-T. Now a fact can be an allegation repeated more often than once. So a fact can be uh, a female reporting that she's a victim of domestic violence to an officer. That officer takes that report based on her word 
and then he becomes a, a, a witness. Well, that's never, ever, ever a witness. That report is never a witness. Never. And it, the same goes for a psyche valve. The same goes for um, all of these other uh, domestic violence shelter, quote, witnesses that say, well, I observed reactive behavior. Well, reactive behavior is not evidence of the original action either. And so the, through this perverted system, now there's new forms of, quote, evidence, but they're called facts. They, they have nothing to do with relativity in, in any way, shape, or form. And always, 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 when you present an affidavit, a declaration, a police report, a domestic violence shelter report to a, a quote judge that automatically turns that attorney a black dress to an administrator. They are never a judge because they're not seeing evidence. And that's the hardest thing for everybody to get their mind wrapped around is dealing with these so-called courts that have been banked since the 1789 Judiciary Act that allow the bank routing system. Yeah, so this, this is the system that you're patronizing, I'm afraid. If you're still claiming to be a citizen and uh, tax preparer and, and going to the voting booths and uh, getting their licenses and registrations, claiming the last name, which they have a patent on through uh, letters patent and um, description. Co copyright basically going back to the Treaty of Amity Commerce Navigation 1794 uh, yeah through trick and deception you know then fast forward 1929 Geneva Convention all right and Everybody's then he's held a prisoner of war because their government has filed for bankruptcy they declared bankruptcy in 1933 and in that, they said, well, if your government ever fails, we corporations will come in and pick you up and hold you, hold on to you. And that's what's been happening ever since. Yeah, the government failed completely and went bankrupt in 1933. All right, and that's what indeed happened. All the holding corporations came along and picked up all uh, the citizens, you know, human beings... Article 2 of the 1929 Geneva Convention itself. It says that human beings are held by the hostile power, but not the individual corporations that have, that have picked them up. And that's what that means. And with Dean Clifford claiming that descriptive last name, Cliff Fjord means that it's a river at the edge of a cliff. That is a patented name that belongs to the law merchant. It's the same thing as Pepperman or Ericsson or uh, Larson or John's son. And Jesus, he was adamant about this when they cr tried to call him David's son. He said, "Why, why would I call, why would I call that house Lord and and, and the other house Lord?" You know, and he, he was very incredulous when they were trying to call him Jesus Davidson, and that was such a clear example and yet nobody uh, wants to hear that they've been taught that patriotism to the last name when in reality it doesn't mean anything it's just a means of human trafficking yeah so you read article 2 from Geneva Convention it says prisoners of war are in the power of the hostile power but not of the individuals or corpse who have captured them Okay, now, now you catch what's going on there? I know it's more attorney language here, but... Um, well, it just means that you're in the holding corporation. It's in a trust. And, and that's what they have sold to you as the judges is the word fiduciary, which is a character of a trust. It's not a trust, it's a character of a trust. You believe that you can trust it, but it's only a representation of an original trust. You can't really trust it. And as you can see with the example of Dean Clifford, 
of uh, Rod Class, of Santos Fenacci. These are all great examples of what that trust gets you. They're patronizing that other daddy. And, and Jesus said, don't do that. Don't deposit yourself into that bank. 1 Corinthians 6. He said, don't you know that you're the judges? And especially, he said, take it to those who are least esteemed in the church. He hated organized religion. Because it has you patronizing something else as your father. It was the only time he ever got violent there at the temple. So what does that tell you? And uh, he was, uh, of course, upset with all the you know, commercial activity, banking, and things that were going on right. he in was that in the square. Court. He, he went into the court, into the temple. And he said, what are you doing? You have turned my house into a den of thieves. You have said that you're the judge, you're protecting human beings, and you've turned my house into a den of thieves. Now we read the uh, definition of holding company from, this is um, uh, Investopedia, and um, it is a parent corporation, limited liability company, or limited partnership that owns enough voting stock and another company controls policies and management. Holding company exists for the sole purpose of controlling another company, which might also be a corporation, limited partnership, or a limited liability company, rather than for the purpose of producing its own goods or services. Holding companies also exist for the purpose of owning property such as real estate, patents, trademarks, stocks, and other assets. If a business is 100% owned by a holding company, it is called wholly owned subsidiary. Uh, Investopedia uh, goes on to say one benefit of forming a holding company is that the holding company itself is protected from the losses. It's a mutual venture. That's exactly what it says in the 1600 charters. Charter of West Virginia, Charter of Virginia, uh, Charter of New Hampshire. Westphalia, all, right? 1648. Right. All of those original charters say exactly that. This is a mutual venture. We're going to mutually insure it. This is what has been happening for forever since the inception of politics. Polycratus in Greek means many. Or poly means many. Kratis means to control or possess. Politics is the action of controlling and possessing many. So if one of their companies goes bankrupt, it says, the holding company experiences a capital loss and a decline in net worth. But the bankrupt company's debtors and creditors can't pursue the holding company for remuneration. Right. Remuneration. Okay. Uh, That's exactly what the attorney said in the uh, attorney O, 12 U.S.C. subsection 73. I'm not hypothecated. The human being is hypothecated. And they had already said it in Article 12 of the Articles of Confederation. When they right. hypothecated the United States to, to discharge its original bankrupt state. Okay, and by the way, uh, Canada comes in during that very last article of the Articles of Confederation. So, uh, you know, Canada has been, uh, uh, well, part, part of this mutual voids. Uh, Forever. Uh, yeah, forever. You go back to the Treaty of Versailles. Canada was held, you know, by France, part of it by England, blah, blah, blah. Everybody was all con uh, uh, confederating throughout time. Here's a contract here. Here's a contract there. Uh, the majority of the welfare system in Canada is the association that it has to the Department of Transportation in the United States incorporated through the Bridges, Tunnels, and Turnpikes Act. Now, everybody in the United States Incorporated that uh, claims to be a citizen, they're all up in arms about the, the state and plight of their bridges lately, especially this last year in Michigan. They said all of the bridges there are, are threats to safety now. Well, it's because they're not being repaired. Canada is keeping all of those monies, although they're the ones that are supposed to be taking care of those bridges, tunnels, and turnpikes. They're not. They're just raking it in through their human productivity. 
nothing's ever going back out to actually do anything to protect humanity. And that, that one's through Bridges Trust. Uh, let's see here. Do I even need to read any more of this? There is more, but... Well, when you're in the holding corporation, um, when a human being is put into the holding corporation as a hypothecated negotiable instrument, from that point on, the um, effect is through the clearinghouse or the Secretary of State to discharge those bankrupt states. And in that um, sense... Uh, Dean Clifford, for example, he talks about the birth certificate. The birth certificate actually goes to the Secretary of State because the Secretary of State is the clearinghouse. That's who's discharging the bankruptcy. That's who uh, takes into account the actuary counts and how much that baby's worth at the birth of the child or the docking of the child, B-E-R-T-H. And at that point in time, the assessment is done then throughout the span of the child's life into adulthood, it's paying down those bankrupt states on, at the behest of Congress. And that's where the bank comes in. The judges, attorneys, prosecuting attorney, child protection, internal revenue service, which they're all the same thing. The IRS is friend of court. The IRS is that internal revenue generation service. It's not a taxing entity. It only wraps a millstone around your neck and the necks of your babies. And the, I think I gave you the definition of the clearinghouse as well. So, yeah, you can read more the rest of this that I'm going to truncate here for time uh, purposes. And uh, in my court case, we never argued the birth certificate itself. We argued the assignment ability. Okay. Right. These uh, attorneys want that assignment ability because that's how they're cashing in on the back end there of everything right. under uh, off your estate. And the claim of abandonment happens at the at that inception. And their premise, what these attorneys are doing, is maintaining that um, the mother, who is legally informing the child, is the one giving up the ability to do anything with that estate because she's giving up any all interests um, under what is known as um, estoppel by assignment. So the minute she lays that baby on the state without realizing, she stopped from having any interest in that property after that because she is shadow of the state. She's the one that's asking it to be her father, patronizing it and adhering to its uh, statutes and, and all of these things and informing that child. Okay, so for the definition of the clearinghouse, we had to go to Merriam Webster for this. An establishment maintained by banks for settling mutual claims and accounts. Okay, then over at the uh, state.gov. And that's the State Department, that's John Kerry. Uh, it says the clearinghouse is a mechanism to exchange information, coordinate activities to enhance peace operations, capacity building efforts. The U.S. hosted the first clearinghouse meeting focused on Africa in October of 2004. Subsequent G8 Africa clearinghouse meetings were hosted by the United Kingdom and Russian Federation in February 2006 and 2000. Uh, June 2006, as well as by Germany and Japan 2007 and 2008. And U.S. Can... held the first G8 Global Clearinghouse in October 2007 to enable information exchange and coordination on peace operations, capacity building efforts around the world. 46 countries and organizations participated in this initial conference. Future G8 conferences will be I guess that should be called G8++, will be held uh, elsewhere in the world to continue this information and coordination. Right, information. Information, and those that that is referring to the vessels. Every human being informed as a legal name, nomenclature. Okay, and then we read the, about the Pyongyang project, and everybody, of course, wants to think North Korea. Well, yes and no. 
but uh, Pyongyang Project has cultivated unique relationships with various North Korean organizations and universities to allow for a system of responsible engagement through capacity building initiatives. And that's what it's all about. Every human being on this planet since 1953 who has been usurped and taken over by Congress is in Pyongyang. When we go over to the AFN.org on the bankruptcy, excerpt from um, Speaker uh, Representative James Trafficking Jr. of Ohio addressing the House. Okay. And he says, Mr. Speaker, we are here now in Chapter 11. Member of, members of Congress are official trustees presiding over the greatest reorganization of any bankrupt entity in world history, the U.S. government. We are setting forth, hopefully, a blueprint for our future. But now, did you catch that? Uh, the members of Congress are official trustees presiding over their own bankruptcy. All right, you out there that study trust law, you should see this for the fraud that it is. Um, and in that, you can find all of the parts of this in 28 U.S.C., the judiciary, stemming from the 1789 Judiciary Act. And all of it involves not only human trafficking, but the genocide of humanity. And then finally it says, ending up, there are some who say it is a coroner's report that will lead to our demise. All right. So here's James Traficant, member of Congress, calling Congress bad guys. But he does, you know, it's just ridiculous on his face because he is part of Congress. But um, he points out that... Uh, they're their own trustees. I mean, that's kind of, uh, <laughs> I mean, that just gets me every time I think about that. You can't be your own trustee over your own bankruptcy. But yet, because of your patronage to the U.S. government, that's what you get. And that's where we come up with the definition of liberty. Liberty can only be granted if one is in honor. The United States Incorporated is not actually granting any kind of liberty. It's discharging its bankrupt states. And you can see this in the Judicial Oath, 28 U.S.C. subsection 453. You can see this in the Attorney Oath, 12 U.S.C. subsection 73 under the Emergency Banking Act. And, and all of the evidence is there. You just have to go read it. Read it for yourself. Yeah, so, you know, for the people out there that are considering this secured party creditor process and doing A for V's and all that sort of thing, all right, last year during the bankruptcy, uh, during the court case, uh, we pulled everybody out of the holding corporations and we stuck the attorneys in there because we said, we pointed out, put her foot down actually that this is unlawful in its face now the attorney patronizing a fictitious government called the bar is a fiction okay you can hold that thing along with corporations and judges all right that lawfully can be held in the holding corporation but not human beings that have done no harm and now now, you turn around and do these A for V uh, processes and uh, secure party creditor stuff. UCC1 is an instrument that deposits you back into the holding corporation. Right. That's how they were discharging bankruptcy. So if you go ahead and fill that out and say that you're a deposit, you're, you're right back in the system. And, and Jesus said it most succinctly, call no man your father, not even Christ. And in the 14th Amendment, Lincoln came in and called all of the corporations persons or living beings. And since that time, you've been maintaining corporate welfare through your own productivity, which is the action of debenture, 
or debt secured by your own earning power. Now I'll tell you how to spot an agent right now. And you give an agent this information, somebody that's been selling the secure party creditor process, and they're usually selling it and selling seminars and all sorts of things that you can purchase. Okay. These are snakes oil salesmen. And these snake oil salesmen don't want you to hear the truth here. And if you give it to them, they're going to deny it. Oh, say, oh, that's not right. Oh, no, that's, don't, don't listen to that. Here, I, 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 I got an A for V, a process that'll work for you. You know, these are agents because they are keeping you on the path to Rome. They're delivering you up to the law merchant, and they're just another useful idiot and or agent of Congress, so you can better be parted out to uh, be delivered up and offset congressional bankruptcy. So, there's your enslavement in a nutshell. Let me get into some news here with the... Uh, Let's see, uh, our hour and a half time period we have left. I that's really pretty good. That's a pretty good 30 minute uh, lecture there for free. Yeah. <laughs> from from Greece.GreekReporter.com, Golden Dawn MP released on bail, banned from speaking publicly. Golden Dawn lawmaker Michael S. Arvantis was released from custody on Friday. He was remanded in custody on charges of directing and participating in a criminal organization. After testifying at the Greek highest courts investigating magistrates Loana Klopta and Maria Dimitropoulou, the 72-year-old Golden Dawn lawmaker, was released on restrictive orders. Arvantes was ordered not to leave Greece and was banned from speaking publicly in any Golden Dawn Party assemblies outside of the Greek Parliament. Banned from participating in his party's assemblies was an unprecedented order in Greek judicial history. During his testimony, Arvantes invoked the right to remain silent. He read out a one-paragraph statement and refused to answer any further questions. <clears throat> Quote, I am a member of a political party. I don't belong in any criminal organization. My prosecution is disgraceful and unacceptable, unquote, stated Arvantes. After the proceedings, both Ar Arvantes and Golden Dawn spokesman Leos Casadieras said that the Greek government is trying to suppress the members of the party. Greek authorities have launched a wide investigation into Golden Dawn's activities. Many of the party's members, including its head, Nikos Michael Loliokos are also accused of participating and directing a criminal organization. On Tuesday, Golden Dawn MP Nikos Kauzilos was arrested after the police found photographs providing that he was involved in attacks against anar anarchists. Moreover, on Thursday, the wife of Golden Dawn leader and also Golden Dawn MP herself, Eleni Zero. Alia was given by the court an extension until Tuesday to prepare for deposition. Now, these are very interesting days to watch as these lawmakers are rounded up swiftly. And that one was given a gag order as well. So, <clears throat> they're not allowing the political propaganda to be promoted now. Greek. Greece. Yeah, here... Uh you know, in the uh, home of the slave, we've got uh, the Smith Modernization Act that was updated uh, in 2012 to make uh, prop uh, propaganda legal again. Not that they hadn't been doing it anyways. You know, I mean, these guys don't even follow their own laws. No. Whatever is most beneficial to... Uh, politics and, and according to market conditions and we see it with these foreclosures even if they follow their own laws these people fighting back their foreclosures should be winning right. but it doesn't work that way right. because of the banking schematic right and now just today we have uh deputies killed a 
73 year old Ashlyn man uh, during an eviction now the comments on this are just very good um, at, at the bottom of this here and maybe we'll read some when we get, get done but one of them says that this was an uh, unlawful eviction um, he hadn't been behind on his mortgage even I don't know that's uh, uh, got to be researched out further but uh, beyond that none of these foreclosures are really lawful in the first place no. but we'll get into that too let me read this this is short from the AP over at OregonLive.com Central Point, Oregon, the Jackson County Sheriff says two deputies were serving an eviction order on an Ashland man t Tuesday when he came out of his bedroom pointing a shotgun at them and they shot and killed him. Sheriff Mike Winters told a press conference Wednesday that both deputies fired and 73-year-old Earl Carlson Harris was hit at least twice. Winters says it appeared the deputy's decision to fire was correct, but the case remains under investigation by state police and others. He says four SWAT team members were off the property and standing by because when deputies talked to Harris about foreclosure on a previous occasion, he was armed. Winters adds that Harris had several guns as well as grenades and flew the American flag upside down, signaling anti-government views. Now remember, this is from the AP. So they're trying to vilify this. this Absolutely, guy. they're trying to vilify him. And he never fired his gun. He never harmed anybody. Those officers sure did. Okay. Uh, I'm, you know, as far I'm as not so, so certain it wasn't suicide by cop, you know. But this guy's 73 years old. He, he's, you know, he Probably doesn't want to go anywhere. None of us do. But this kind of the sort of thing that is... Has been perpetuated uh, as people uses objects at the behest of Congress are thrown into holding corporations and, and deemed civilly dead. That uh, that uh, they think that uh, they have the right to, you know, banks have the right to own homes over human beings. And a bank is a fiction. A fiction can't own a thing. So this is unlawful and just flat out wrong on its face. Right, and it was only facilitated by consent originally back in 1802 with the Indemnification Convention and then the related uh, acts of enablement that allowed the corporate governance to come into play in the first place. But none of these foreclosures are lawful to begin with because uh, they're not loaning you any money, even though under their laws. Okay, people are, are fighting their uh, foreclosures under their laws, and now I don't agree with fighting in the courts like that. However, they are correct about the laws. Right. And, and this Confederacy is not following their own laws. The attorneys that gave these cops these directives. Are perpetrating genocide. That's right. The, the, and notice the attorneys aren't showing up with guns. It's their it's their goon squad, and and the goon squad is hired with a low IQ, so they're good lap dogs for attorneys. Um, that's what it sounds like. What happened? Because it says that he had come out of his bedroom to engage with law enforcement. That means that they had broken into his home. So he was probably most likely expecting that he was running into somebody who had broken into his home. Yeah, so he came out of the bedroom. Right. That's right. Okay, and it's talking about grenades and guns and all that. It never says once that they that uh, he discharged any guns or weapons. He harmed nobody. On the other hand, these cops perpetuated and carried out murder to behest of these Attorneys, corporate counsel for, attorneys. for for co what for commercial crimes, for crimes against the revenue, okay? Because the bank said he's in foreclosure. Now we go down to some of these uh, comments down here, and I'll see if I can find it again. But one of these comments said that uh, it was a wrongful foreclosure, and um, of course there's a couple agents on here calling 
This poor old guy, now deceased, a loser. He couldn't pay his bills. All right. All right. First of all, they got us on this attorney money in the first place. It's not even money. It's a... Uh, they're bills. Yeah, Dollar they're bills. bills. Okay. So nobody can pay anything in reality. We're just sitting on the king's land and he can do whatever he wants to us because we're bowing down to the king all the time. I'm believing that that king exists and that it has some kind of <clears throat> authority. Uh, yeah, like I said, the <coughs> comments are on here are really... Really nice to see most of the people standing up here for uh, the human being instead of the a police state and the banks. And again, that judge is the bank. So you know who basically should be charged for murder in this uh, is the judge and the corporate counsel attorneys that are acting at the behest of these corporations, because the banks are only representations of the corporations that are involved. Yeah, here's one comment I'll read. Just because a judge signs marching orders from Northwest Trustee LLC, biggest eviction law firm in the Northwest, doesn't make it correct. And absolutely it doesn't. Most of these foreclosures that we've looked at, that I looked at when I was looking at things uh, from a statutory viewpoint, they're, they're illegal to begin with right. for one reason or another. Now, later we found the borrower's covenant here, which we entered in my case. And then you also have to explain the 1832 Nullification Proclamation, and a lot of people will not read that one. Um, but that one makes it unlawful or illegal for anybody to argue statute or legislation inside of court. True. And so it, it maintains that if you attempt to do that, no evidence is going to be put on the court record. And the person arguing statute and legislation is going to be held in contempt by that bank. So they've got everything sewn up. Yeah, it's a closed system. It's a good old boys club for attorneys. If you're not an attorney, then you're a special deposit and you're just a thing for them, for their muse. Right, and that's why we say don't go into court. Don't be that deposit and stop patronizing that thing. Shut it down. It relies on your patronage. You know, unfortunately, most of these comments are pointing the finger at the cops, and they don't see the man behind the curtains pulling the strings. You no, know, those cops entered that hall, and they were there to serve a warrant or whatever. Uh, they ran into somebody who was self-protecting in self-defense mode, and again, they're in self-defense mode because of corporate counsel. They're trigger-happy, expecting somebody to blow their heads off, but they're not considering that they've just broken into somebody's house. Because they believe in what corporate counsel tells them. And this is identical to the first uh, Civil War. This is how Congress got everybody to kill themselves and each other the first go around here. And it's happening all over the world. I see posts on Skype from uh, people fighting the fight in Scotland and uh, the UK, Australia. It's the same everywhere. These attorneys are just taking everything. And, now that and they're using their... Uh, corporate uh, policy enforcement thugs that are essentially robots, okay? You don't have to worry about RoboCop. We already got them. You know, these cops, uh, you know, they believe in this commercial crime stuff because it's been indoctrinated into them so, so hard. I mean... And before they're hired, they're required to have a very low IQ so that they can be manipulated. That was based on a judicial order back in 1999, requiring that cops, law enforcement, have low IQs so that corporate counsel attorneys can manipulate them. And, and the majority of corporate counsel, of course, is trained in the action of psychiatry, the Delphi technique, um, consensus reality creation, and related psychological warfare. So we are really screwed here, folks, unless we can get through to some of these cops that are still human beings inside, all right, and don't want to continue harming humanity, because this is going to come home to roost for them, too. They're going to get, you know, thrown out, as we've been seeing in these news reports over and over again. They're going to get thrown out on the street. Uh, they're going to be in the same situation at some point. Right. Their families are going to go through the same stuff as everybody else. And they are. They're taking now. They're raising their retirements. 
Um, they're rolling on them, charging them with crimes. And I, I implore all law enforcement to put yourself in the other officer's shoes. Now, we need a real sheriff here because our orders are, they're out there, okay? They're waiting to be acted upon. Now, what's neat is that they're holding law lawmakers accountable. We had one in Greece this week. Now we're watching one come down in Panama from the globalspot.com dispatch news uh, from the AFP. Panama arrest fugitive Ecuadorian ex-lawmaker. Police in Panama on Monday arrested a fugitive former opposition lawmaker from Ecuador who is wanted in his homeland for complicity to murder. Tito Galo Lara was taken into custody in the province of Varguas. Police spokesman Mara Rivera told the AFP she declined to provide more details. Galo Lara, shackled and wearing a bulletproof vest as he was taken into the prosecutor's offices in Panama City, shouted the Ecuadorian President Rafael Correa, quote, is trying to kill me. Quote, I'm a victim of political persecution. Because I reported corruption inside Korea's government, end quote, Galilara said to the gathered reporters, Galilara was convicted in 2013 in Ecuador of complicity in the murder of a couple and their four-year-old child and sentenced to 10 years in prison. His girlfriend was deemed the mastermind of the crime. He subsequently fled to Panama where he was given asylum on the basis of claims he was a victim of political persecution. On May 19th, however, Panama revoked the asylum protection after Ecuadorian authorities provided the, with documents containing, quote, new elements that gave full assurance of the existence of crimes, end quote, the foreign ministry said at the time. The 46-year-old former lawmaker of the Patriotic Society Party disappeared, however, until his arrest on Monday. In reversing its decision, Panama argued that, quote, constitutional guarantees, end quote, existed in Ecuador to guarantee Galo Lara a fair trial back home. Panamanian authorities also pointed to attacks against Korea and other officials on Galo Lara's Twitter account, saying such activity was banned for political refugees. The revocation of asylum coincided with a visit to Panama last month by Ecuadorian Foreign Minister Ricardo Patino. These are interesting days. A lawmaker saying that he was innocent. Yeah, there isn't one of them innocent. Not a single one. There's another one that is just sick. From the star.com.my, <clears throat> the nation. A maid agent in Ganting Highlands baby dumping case to be charged with murder. In Paoling Jaya, a maid agent would be charged on Tuesday with murder in the case of a six-month-old baby found in a ravine at Ganting Highlands. Selangor Police Chief Senior Deputy Commander Daytok Abdul Sama Mat said the man in his 40s could also face human trafficking charges. The grisly fine led to the discovery of, of excuse me, the grisly fine led to the discovery a syndicate said to have forced foreign maids to work without any pay, as well as being sexually abused. Quote, the 13 women rescued after the syndicate was raided included the mother of the baby and are in healthy condition, end quote. Quote, they are still being detained and to be handed to the immigration department for overstaying in the country and not possessing work permits. So the attorneys are also cashing in on this end. Quote, I cannot comment on the claims that the suspect had raped some of the women, but that is an angle that we are investigating, end quote, he said. Police were first alerted about the case on May 31st after a 33-year-old Indonesian woman who claimed to be working for the agent for two years lodged a police report that her six-month-old baby had died and could not be found. She alleged that the baby was born in November of 2013 and was conceived after she was raped by one of the employers last year. Police raided three houses in Kota Kamuning on June 2nd and rescued 12 Indonesian women in their 20s and 30s. The women claimed that they were not paid and subjected to sexual abuse by the agent and other employers that they had been hired out to, as DCP Abdul Sma said. It was alleged that the man kept some of the maids locked up and used them as sex slaves. The suspect reportedly told police that he had separated the six-month-old child from his mother for the fear of her spreading hepatitis B to the child. 
It's just, it's foul. Now, they, they've only got one agent in this one. I'm praying and praying that they go after the agency itself because this is who is human trafficking. And, of course, this is at the behest of corporations discharging congressional bankruptcy by the use of these females and children. Now, this one here, you know, I'm trying to make this short. I, I covered it on my show Wednesday. I'll cover it again because the symbology is rich. Mayor of an affluent Southern California city was caught on camera leaving a bag of what appeared to be dog feces on his neighbor's property. Police said, and the neighbor believes this wasn't an accident. Uh, now, this is uh, Mayor Dennis near of San Marino, town of approximately 13,000 people. That's pretty small for a California town, but um, uh, it's just south of Pasadena. He was identified as the person placing uh, a plastic bag. Well, he threw it. There's a video of it. And he threw it in the walkway of a home in the 1400 block of Charlton Road on Saturday. Uh, the bag was tied clothes and appeared to have been intentionally placed at the walkway entrance entrance now the homeowner Philip Lau says that the surveillance footage shows near and it does you can see it and his wife walking in a video near his wife seen uh, pointing to Lau's walkway and then near is seen tossing the bag onto it Lau believes that near was seeking revenge for his opposition to the mayor's dog park proposal, Lau is against the dog park because he believes dogs are left there for hours as the owners run errands, and then the dogs tend to fight when left unattended. Uh, let's see here. Lau uh, lives a block away from Lacey Park, and as such has a no poop zone signs in his front yard. Okay? And near does not like him posting signs like that. But Lau believes that it is right as a homeowner. Lau told the city council that when people take down their USC and UCLA signs, he'll take down his no poop signs. But uh, just that uh, the symbology of the mayor throwing poop on the populace. Okay. I mean, that, that says it all to me in a nutshell of what uh, kind of people you're patronizing people right he's, he's just a child in a grown-up body and combine that with the psychopathy and you have a violent malicious bullet or um, use of uh, terror tactics you know those those things seem like they're small but this is a mayor doing this type of thing after a quote citizen is putting signs up to ask that, you know, they keep his lawn clear. Yeah, which you can't blame him. He doesn't have any dogs. So right. why does he have to go out and clean up dog poop? Right. All right. So it's, it's an act of terrorism if you look at it from... But out. the mayor says, oh, yeah, you're going to clean up dog poop, all right, because I'm going to throw some in your yard. Right. It's just foul. I mean, they, they just... Um, enough is enough. I hope they throw the book at that guy. Yeah, that this... Last week in the StarTribune.com substance abuse counselor who drove with dying man on a windshield gets 55 years to life. You and I were talking about this one, and this one was like one of the most horrifying things. This um, shows you the mindset of a psychopath, and of course it's psychopaths that are ru running this uh, world, okay, through their... Uh, construct known as government uh yeah go ahead and read it it's sickening very sad <clears throat> excuse me from the star .com nation substance abuse counselor who drove a dying man on windshield gets 55 years to life los angeles a substance abuse counselor was sentenced thursday to 55 years to life in prison for hitting a pedestrian with her car and driving through a los angeles suburb with the man dying on her windshield. A jury earlier this year convicted Sherry Lynn Wilkins, 53, of second-degree murder, driving under the influence, and hit and run. 
Prosecutors said Wilkins' blood alcohol level was nearly twice the legal limit when she struck 31-year-old Philip Moreno in November 2012 as she was leaving a counseling center. She drove two miles through the city of Torrance before other motorists swarmed her car at a traffic light and kept her there until police arrived. Moreno was taken to the hospital where he died. Superior Court Judge Henry Hall said, quote, Ms. Wilkins demonstrated an extraordinary callousness in fleeing the scene and trying to shake Mr. Moreno's body off her car. This is a callous murder, not an unfortunate act. Hall re rejected a request from the defense and sentenced Wilkins under California's three strikes laws, citing her long history of drug-related crimes. That tripled the minimum 15 years to life she otherwise could have received before being eligible for parole. Now, my thing was the defense attorney attempted to maintain that um, Mr. Moreno, Philip Moreno, was drunk when she hit him. And the act of that psychopath, the psychopathic mind maintaining the um, ability to dehumanize a human being by saying, well, they were drunk. They, they, it, and we've seen this over and over and over again. They were just a bum. They were homeless. They were just, they were just maybe an immigrant or, or whatever else. And, um, yeah, this is what the attorneys, you, you know, uh, just, they, yeah, they come up with this stuff, you know, and they, that's under one of the eight stages of genocide. Right. Classification, dehumanization, organization, polarization. You're right. M multiple, uh, probably all eight are in there, huh? Right. Right. And then, of course, denial. Um, other human beings don't want to believe these things are occurring, and they have the fallback always onto cognitive dissonance, which just allows them to believe what they're seeing with their own eyes. Yeah. And... And these, again, are the same type of psychopaths that, uh, you know, write the laws, and law means to lie down. So, you know, what you're lying, what you're lying down to is actually attorney word product doctrine under commercial crimes, 27 CFR 72.11. And you see how this, this helps us out here. Uh, just some headlines here real quick. 17 years after gun bans in Australia... Police say gun crime is out of control. Right, and that's how it's always been. It's not the citizen. You know, we, we can go back to uh, the Reagan administration. I was talking about that with others this week as well. Ronald Reagan came in about two weeks before the Brady incident when he was peeing with a bullet uh, when Secret Service attempted on... Reagan to make it appear that a citizen had done that thing. Uh, two weeks before that, he was promising the American sheeple that he'll always consider their gun rights and promising them that he was a good president and promising them all these things. And as an actor, he was always, always, always believed. And the way that that played out, of course, is that um, they said that was attempt on, an attempt on Reagan, which is the action of shock doctrine upon a people. So if you believe that your president, your beloved president, has been attempted on, you tend to side with that president. Well, in that play, what, what happened? Brady was paralyzed. Ultimately, the Brady Bill came out of that. And now you have less and less and less gun rights. However, the mind, the sheeple citizen mind, tends to forget all of the things that were occurring at that time, including the Iran-Contra hearings when the Reagan administration rolled over on Oliver North and everything else, when it was the Reagan administration that was selling arms to Iran in the first place. And that, to me, is just... It, it's always, always, always the same Gelnhausen charter over and over again. The sheeple forget about this. It was only two weeks that had passed. And it was only during that administration, you know, an eight year stint of that administration where the sheeple mine forgot everything that Reagan was actually involved in. Iran Contra, Oliver North, all of these things were occurring. Shock doctrine was implied through the Challenger disaster. All of these things were going on in the sheeple mind that um, were just keeping every 
everybody busy. And again, um, I urge everybody to read the book four of the church committee reports before the supplementary detailed staff reports on foreign and military intelligence if you want to know more about the CIA as a production company. Yeah, I mean, we can't stress that enough because once you read that and, or listen to Tammy read it. She read it on her YouTube channel. You can go there and listen to her read it. And uh, you see how this information is created for the sheeple to be used for Congress to employ more tactics against you to even uh, get more money out of you, get more patron, you know, and uh, you know, they get you coming back uh, to them. You know, they're the ones that are causing all of these incidents, right. and then it's getting the sheeple to go back to it for protection, which is ridiculous on its face. Right. I know, but it works, and it's proven to work over and over and over again because people just don't know these things. Right. You had the Challenger incident. You had Chernobyl happening during that administration. You had so many things that were these beautiful uh, CIA productions, and this forced the human mind to fall back within cognitive dissonance and rely on its patriarch. Do you want to take a break? We're at the top of the hour. Yeah, we can take a short break if you'd like. Cool. We'll be right back. I need a drink real quick. Okay, and we're back from break. This is the Public Law Radio Show. It's heard Friday nights from 10 to 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's uh, 3 to 5 GM, GMK, GMT. And uh, this is uh, Tammy Peppermint and myself, Bo, from the Bo and Rocco Show. And uh, you can listen to this live, of course, at... Uh, also, uh, Tinosaur.com. Tinosaur.com and NoBordersRadio.co.uk. Now, so, let's see. Going to the MercuryNews.com here. Leland Yee pleads not guilty to gun trafficking corruption charges. And if you are familiar with uh, this story, he was uh, picked up in a massive roundup operation of uh it included himself and uh a, a chinese guy by the name of uh shrimp man or shrimp boy whatever he was uh they were all gun running together okay senators yeah that's right senators well and and it, it goes along with what we were talking about before the break about all of these shows and stuff. And, and for all of the listeners out there, an example of sheepledom actually happened about eight hours ago from the LA Times opinion. And it's asking, you know, go ahead, Bo, because it, it's just flabbergasting that, that this guy, he's charged with gun running and, and a whole bunch of corrupt illegal activity yeah let me read some of this from mercury flanked by some of his alleged criminal confederates suspended state senator leland Yi pleaded not guilty tuesday to federal gun trafficking and political corruption charges the first step in what promised to promises to be a drawn-out legal drama to determine whether he will spend the rest of his life in prison and I'm surprised they used the word Confederates. That's funny. During a brief appearance in federal court here, the 65-year-old Yi, through his lawyer, entered the plea to an indictment that accuses him of accepting bribes in exchange for political favors and trying to arrange an international arms deal with undercover FBI agents. Okay, I'd say they got the evidence. What are they? What do they need to... Uh, run this through the courts for? Well, because going back to the 1789 Judiciary Act, uh, they're going to just, you know, run this one through the uh, ringer here and uh, and suck every last nickel out of this. You know, all the attorneys are going to get all the money they can. The court's going to make all the money they can. It's a big money-making schematic instead of just holding people accountable by the evidence, which we do under the public law. 
So this is just absolutely sick. Yeah, and then back to the story that Tammy was pointing out here. Uh, the L.A. Times. How disgraced poll Lee, huh? Politician. Okay, politician, right? Uh, Leland Yi get three hundred thousand dollar, a uh, three hundred thousand in votes in the recent election. He got three hundred thousand votes after this stuff went down. Right. People are still voting. <laughs> For one, people are still voting. And again, you know, here we have uh, them voting for a known criminal. Kind of reminds me of that story that the guy just got out of jail and he says he's going to go uh, the one uh, in Louisiana, yeah. run for Congress. Yeah. yeah. So in this week's largely sleepy California election, there was one startling result. More than 300,000 ballots cast for Leland Yee for Secretary of State good enough for third place. Even though he dropped out after being accused of conspiracy to run guns and political corruption. Mark Z. Barabuck writes in the LA Times. Yee's tally, which is likely to grow as hundreds of thousands of uncounted ballots are processed, pushed him past a pair of good government candidates also vying. <laughs> well, there's, yeah, an oxy, good, there's good an oxymoron. <laughs> good government. Well, the only good government is out of your own house if you adhere to public law, folks. Candidates also vying to be the state's chief election officer. Well, as Secretary of State, he's the one that's... Uh, clearing house. Yeah, clearing house of for the course state. he's a great clearing house. He's going to trick you out like nobody's business. So, it's a bit of irony there and just... I, 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 I can't believe it, you know... The sheep are just so dumbed down, or those are all people in government voting. I don't know. Right, which takes us into more shields. I mean, uh, Obama was said to have had a whole bunch of people on his payroll that were liking his tweets and all sorts of stuff. Well, same, same thing same with thing. Michelle, blah, blah, blah. Right, all of them. Well, then this week, uh, you had showed me that story. Do you have that story up? Oh, uh, from the Daily Sheeple. Yeah. Self-proclaimed Monsanto employee trolling anti-GMO articles claiming organic food kills people. And I see this almost every day on my Facebook um, news feed, too, because they're doing the same thing with uh, marijuana. They'll, they'll do a picture and say, oh, my gosh, another another human being died of a marijuana overdose, you know, and things like this. They're just trolls. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Like uh, some of those comments on there. Where that 73 year old got shot by police, you know, calling him, uh, you know, a loser for not paying his bills and, right. and such like that. Those are just trolls. They're not human beings because human beings actually consider the human being as the most important rather than money being most important. And you can always see who the shills are. Yeah, so, yeah, you can read more about that at the Daily Sheep if you want. It's just, it goes hand in hand with uh, Walter Burian's uncovering of over 800,000 federal employees on the federal payroll that had no job description back circa on or around um, 2008, 2009. You know, who knows what that number is today. That's probably all the new jobs that they're creating out there people blogging to keep uh you know the oligarchs in power and if you want more information on that you can go find walter burian's site at cafr1.com and he's got a lot of information that most people don't want to read but it's imperative that everybody read it the comprehensive annual financial reports are very important for people to understand and read them and see what's going on in your local communities. Yeah, so in the meantime, we see what a great job they're doing, you know, and it's probably by design. If you go back and read Carol Quigley's Tragedy and Hope, you can see all this stuff was planned a long time ago, like this shift in the the power structure going to the east. That was all planned back in... Uh, uh, the 40s by this think tank uh, out of the UN. Huxley said that too. He said 1984 and what was the other one that he wrote? Um, uh, 
the Brave New World. They, well, they were like no, this. no, no, no. Um, Sorry. Well, yeah. Uh, George Orwell was the pen name that uh, 1984 was written right. under. And then Huxley did. Um, I think it was the Brave New World, right? One of the Aldous Huxley, yeah, Brave yeah. New World and Brave New World Revisited. Well, in his um, revolution speech that he gave at. Stanford University, he said, you know, those were like blueprints. You've been playing that here on the station, I believe, too, um, right. for folks. Right, which I hope borders. people have taken that to heart and listened to it. Right, and I, and I try to play it whenever we get an opportunity to play it. Um, uh, and I also have it posted, the audios, on my Facebook and, you know, and of course, Twitter and, and things like that because people, everybody needs to hear these things, you know, the depopulation policy itself, where it stems from, who were these think tanks, and um, of course I am not promoting Aldous Huxley, that is disgusting, if you listen to his speeches, he's all for depopulation in order to maintain that national security, just like the other, um, right, he was one of them, but he gave disclosure, right, which, nobody listened though, right, and, and in that disclosure and all. They thought it was entertainment or something. Right. As usual. And um, anybody can go to my Facebook wall and, and find that uh, audio link and, and listen to it themselves as well if they, they don't uh, hear it right here on No Borders Radio. At the Ultra Culture blog website here is a little write-up on Are the Police Becoming a Domestic Military? Uh, it's what do you get when you combine post-war military surplus equipment with U.S. domestic law enforcement agencies. Now, what they're not telling you is, uh, uh, you know, behind all of that is this uh, doctrine handed down by the attorneys that the police operate under. Uh, sheer volume of equipment coming into the country. Uh See the wave making New York Times article War Gear Flows into uh, Police Departments. Makes it look like we're building another branch of the military. But for what? Different people have different answers, but they've all got one thing in common fear. Okay? So the government knows what they're doing, they know what it's doing to you, and it's not by accident. All right? And they are going to. Uh, you know, they're going to just run this country into the ground, and the the, the uh, you know the, the power shift that was predicted in tragedy and hope to the east. Uh, I I mean, bringing down the U.S. is part of the plan, and that's what Obama's objectives are. Okay, if you look at everything he says, it all sounds great, like everything's going to get better, and he's making it better. No, look at what he does. It's absolutely destroying anything that's left. And it's part of the plan. Veterans, okay? Veterans Today was reporting on that as well. Um, terrorist assaults world sanity. And, um, you know, they don't go into depth on the CIA involvement, of course. But um, Veterans Today is reporting on these things as well. The psychological warfare implied against... Uh, human beings is just over the top recently. Yes. Uh, hearts and mind, that's part of their modus operandi. Uh, I see you wanted to read that Kern County defense attorney arrested after meth bust pleads yes. guilty to drug charges. Absolutely. That one is something that really got to me this week. I did a YouTube um, video on it earlier today. I liked it so much. The people... So far, it seemed to be thumbing that one out pretty good, too. Good. And you can find that at Bonos Entertainment on YouTube. Um, Kern County defense attorney arrested after meth bust pleads not guilty to drug charges. Now, the most beautiful is that this domestic terrorist is attempting to sue the sheriff. Bakersfield, California, Kern County defense attorney arrested after a drug bust in Rosamond pleaded not guilty to charges against him Thursday. Craig Alkin represented himself at his arraignment. The Kern County Sheriff's Office told ABC, 23 ABC Alkin showed signs of being under the influence outside of duplex in Rosemont on May 29th. 
Deputies also found meth, scales, and a pipe inside his home. Elkin is facing several charges, including possession of a tr controlled substance. 23 ABC asked Elkin about accusations that he accepted meth as payment in the past. Elkin said he had never done that. Elkin told AB 23 ABC he has filed a lawsuit against the Tehachapi I couldn't pronounce Police that one either. Department as well as the Kern County Sheriff's Office. Elkin said a client of his was arrested by deputies when they searched his client's car. They found several computers, jewelry, and gold coins. But Elkin said the arrest reports doesn't mention it, that any items were seized. They forgot to log it in. They log it back out when they took it. They don't know the name of the person they gave it to, and now they don't know where it is, end quote. Mark Nations, assistant county counsel, told 23ABC the claim has since been rejected by the sheriff, and the sheriff's office has been conducting its own internal investigation. 23ABC also asked Elkin if he feels like he is being targeted by law enforcement. Quote, well, I'm sure they don't like the fact that I've filed these lawsuits, and there are more coming. End quote, said Elkin. Now, that is the action of a paper terrorist, a domestic terrorist. He's suing law enforcement for his arrest, when in reality, this attorney doesn't like the fact that he was arrested, that he has been a citizen since... Uh, when was it? J July of last year. And in this action, he's he's hoping to threaten law enforcement. He's hoping to get them to back off. But what it looks like, and I'm so proud of the Kern County Sheriff, is that they're standing their ground and holding their ground against him. And I'd like to yeah, we need off. sheriffs like that. Absolutely. And, and hopefully, I pray soon, one of them will take it. A step further here and start in full enforcing our orders under the public law for murder now these attorneys these murderers are the same murderers that have always been let off according to Matthew 27 instead of arresting these murderers the attorneys and pulling Jesus off the cross these attorneys have gotten away with commercial activity Time and time and time and time again until now. And my hat and my heart goes out to the Kern County Sheriff. Yeah, we need to rest them all. And as I pointed out in the YouTube video also not long ago, that under the the rules of war, attorneys are the ones that should be in prisons, in the physical prisons. Right. It says in the 1929 Geneva Convention that you can only imprison somebody who's escaped. And in 1933, of course, all the attorneys came in under oath, 12 U.S.C. subsection 73, and escaped from being a prisoner of war by maintaining simply that they were not. They, they, they don't have a government. The Bar Association is a fictional government. They have an oath to the Bar. Yeah. Um... Well, you know, and, and and again, you know, people, you gotta, you gotta choose here. You know, you're either gonna support that thing that's killing you, or you're gonna choose to patronize your own house. Because under the Geneva Convention, you will be picked up as a prisoner of war and held in the holding corporation as a thing. You know, you wonder why people are getting treated this way. Well, we've shown you how. The attorneys have had have granted their selves the right to do this to you. Right, and sadly, that's what's going on with Dean Clifford. He doesn't have a government that he's patronizing, so he's being held prisoner of war for his own quote protection under the laws of infants. If you have your own government patronizing your house, as Jesus said, and upholding the public law, you are a sovereign state with full so sovereignty and immunity according to the Foreign Sovereign Immunities Act the restricted principle of sovereign immunity and, and the rules of war themselves yeah and this orchestration you know by the government now is just it's 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 off the charts I mean uh, I mean, they're, 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 they're spending all this money. Really, it's like a black hole. 
Now the way uh, you know it's 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 being <laughs> okay. Let, let me try to explain this. Uh, the, they're the ones that are causing all of this dissent by all these ridiculous laws they're passing, all these foreclosures that are allowing to occur, the treatments of veterans, the treatment of uh, human yeah. beings in general. You can't even feed uh, homeless people or start on the street now without getting charged for a crime under their laws. You know, I was watching as, as the... Uh, Congress members in the UK recently have been putting up homeless spikes to prevent homeless people from sleeping on public property. That's right. I in remember reading that. This is in the adherence to national security. And, and the sheeple, when you sheeple are condoning these things, adhering to these things, consenting that the visual appearance of a street is more important than a human being, you will also be taken into the system. That is your reward for treating your fellow human being like that. If you can, if you have the ability to view a human being as an object and not worthy, then, you, you know, the sky's the, the limit on what's going to occur to you. I will ensure, make sure, guarantee that you will be held accountable for these things. I will not tolerate this type of behavior. And we can't take it much longer here because uh, as things escalate, things get more and more dicey. For example, uh, $264 billion for USA nuclear weapons, and that's not counting some of the costs. All right, now they're spending also all this money. They're ramping up for the uh, civil uh, backlash that they know it's coming because they created it. All right. Also, there's a report I read recently here on um, um, millions of dollars spent on uh, boats that were to go to Afghanistan, never got delivered. You know, they, they're, they're a uh, money-wasting machine, and that's, that's part of the plan to bring things down. They're, you know, their plan is to shift the power over to the east. That's why you hear about all these uh, banking operations. Um, are moving to Hong Kong, okay, now I know there's some stories out there like that, I don't have any of my fingertips, but uh, do some of your own research here and see how these things are playing out here, and it's not an accident, it's not just by uh, chance that these things happened, these things, again, they were planned out a long time ago, we had disclosure, you know, they've, you know, they told us, well, you know, back, uh, in 1777 that they were a confederacy and uh, Congress which, which means with transgression and then under the uh, 1941 Atlantic Charter this thing became global every country that came under that uh, Treaty of Westphalia uh, all their human beings were thrown in the holding corporation and special deposit as well so it's not isolated to the United States, it's, no. it's 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 global. It's everybody in the Confederacy, and and we're watching that play out as we speak. Um, this week, from Philly.com, um, uh, for example, now from Philly.com, Darby tax preparer charged with stealing foster kids' identities. Now this guy was given a list of foster kids from who? Corporate counsel. So he starts selling these identities to people to for them to claim on their their taxes. Now it doesn't maintain that those people are citizens. It doesn't charge any of them. It charges him and him alone for selling the kids' identities. Now when you go into who has the benefit of these things, it is only corporate counsel, the local judge, the, the attorneys that are finding this out, the prosecuting attorney, and I, I had a question on the comment feature. I said, why is the state, once again, the benefactor stemming from injury to bring into law of children of the state? As the state is prosecuting such case using children not once in this schematic, not twice through such as CAPTA, 
or the Child Abuse Prevention and Treatment Act that Walter Mondale put into place, but usually three or four times as a county receiving federal funds is usually the same county receiving those matching funds through the judge. This was recently evidenced in Indiana to be pocketing those funds that are not even going to foster carers and adopt parents. My question is, when do sheep will wake up and stop buying into this cash for kids schematic, allowing attorneys to cash in from inception to extension? Judges are charging for the use of human bodies. Let me repeat that. Judges are charging for the use of human bodies, which in any other realm would be called prostitution. Now you can find the, the first one at uh, philly.com. You can find the second one at southbendtribune.com, and it's regarding a, adoptive parents filing a class action suit against Indiana DCS. And in that, $240 million has disappeared, and it really didn't. Those federal dollars come in to each county, and the judge is actually pocketing the matching funds that are supposed to go out to these foster carers and adoptive parents. Now, of course, that's Judas who they're paying to take kids off of normal parents. And uh, this whole schematic has to be put to an end. Stop trafficking the children. Stop allowing these things to occur. And I'd like to read a quote out of, out of Mein Kampf. Quote, the state must declare the child to be the most precious treasure of the people. As long as the government is perceived as working for the benefit of the children, the people will happily endure almost any curtailment of liberty and almost any deprivation of rights. That is a quote from Hitler. You are consenting, condoning, partaking of this system. Partaking stems from the word participation. So it's not an apple that you're eating from that tree of knowledge. A tree of knowledge only bears concepts. You're buying all of these concepts and allowing human beings to be victims of human trafficking and genocide at the behest of these corporate council attorneys. Enough is enough. This is the maintenance of corporate welfare. Enough is enough. And I'm sorry, a correction on that story about the boats. They were going to Afghanistan. Uh, they were... Uh, eight of them they were forever landlocked they never saw use even though they were uh given top priority to get this paid for and get them over there this uh breaking news in here uh, david rockefeller's son richard dead in small plane crash oh wow former chase manhattan ceo david rockefeller's 65 year old son richard gilder rockefeller and the great-grandson of John D. Rockefeller Sr. has died in a small plane crash outside of New York City at Westchester County Airport. Richard had reportedly celebrated his father's 99th birthday with family Tuesday night. Uh, more details can be found over at silverdoctors.com. We'll try to update this tomorrow as well on the Leaving the Farm Show and if we have any new information we just now got that in wow interesting uh there's an older story that uh, i've been putting on the back burner for a while here i don't even have it pulled up but i wanted to throw that out there about uh uh what is it uh, uh bachman turner overdrives guitar player uh, 65 now I believe going from memory and, and he's been working in real estate as a broker and now he had gotten charged for uh, uh, solicitation of uh, sex to a minor or some such so uh, let's see yeah this is from Rolling Stone um, Bachman Turner Overdrive founder charged with sexual assault and that's really guitarist uh, Tim Bachman uh, was previously found not guilty of similar charges last year. So he's been charged for this thing before. Attorney's got him off. And see, Canadian police have charged original Bachman Turner Overdrive rhythm guitarist Tim Bachman with several sexual offenses 
including sexual assault, sexual interference, and invitation to sexual touching. Leading up to the charges, authorities in Abbotsford, British Columbia, have been investigating incidents related to Bachman that took place in the 90s, CBC News reports. The alleged victim's names will not be released due to a court order. And she is currently free under the provision that he must avoid contact with anyone under the age of 16. Additionally, he must keep away from public parks, schoolyards, daycare, swimming pools, and other areas where minors are typically present. And he was, like I said, found previously not guilty on similar offenses last year after a woman claimed he had groped her while she was living with him as a foster child. And it, it was reported earlier that he was in, he's a realtor, he was in politics. Um, yeah, taking care of business. Right. And this, this type of thing is, is it's just intolerable. It's sick. Absolutely disgusting. Yeah, well, I mean, it says it all when he goes from uh, being somebody that you can fairly respect as a musician to being a broker. Brokers are some of the foulest attorneys out there. Um, Tim had been working as a real estate agent in Abbotsford since the early 90s. He also served as director of a real estate board in the area during the mid-2000s. Sick. Yeah. Sick, sick, sick. So he's just Yeah, I think we need to take care of some business with with uh, some of these real estate agents out there because they're all human trafficking too. Absolutely. That's what that is. That's what they are. They traffic in real estate. That's a human being. Yeah. Yeah, the real estate. It's not the property that you've been programmed to think it is. It's... Go, go look at all of the Talmudic laws that Senate is passing down. Go look at, uh, you know, Google uh, Realtor.com Talmud and Senate, and you'll find a bunch of Senate bills allowing those who adhere to the Talmudic text to get away with all of these things, tax breaks, um, all of these things can be found at their schools of thought. These are Talmudic Jews. That's what the false Jew is. It doesn't matter what color they are. It doesn't matter what culture they are. It doesn't matter where they came from, the nationality or origins. It's the adherence to the Talmudic text that allowed them to be the, that false Jew. Now, are you familiar with the Lois <coughs> Lerner uh, IRS uh, scandal? Uh, not yet. <laughs> not yet. Oh, <Okay. laughs> uh, Okay, let me just read this here. Maybe it'll spell it out. Uh, Washington, D.C. today. And uh, Ways and Means Committee Chairman David Camp, Republican from Michigan, issued the following statement regarding the Internal Revenue Service informing the committee that they had lost Lois Lerner emails from a period of January 2009, April 2011, through, that, through those periods of time, due to a supposed computer crash. The agency only has learner emails to and from other IRS employees during this time frame. The IRS claims it cannot produce emails written only to or from learner and outside agencies or groups, such as the White House, Treasury, Department of Justice, FEC, Democrat officials. The fact that I'm just learning about this over a year into the investigation is completely unacceptable and now calls into question the credibility of the IRS response to congressional inquiries there needs to be an immediate investigation forensic audit by, by the Department of Justice as well as the Inspector General uh, yeah so have the uh, Fox uh, guard guard the hen house again just a short time ago Commissioner Cushing promised to produce all learner documents it appears now that it was an empty promise now, remember I was talking about earlier how these you know the laws only apply to the plebeians okay Congress can't be held accountable for these laws and um, okay reading on more 
Um, just a short time ago. Let's see where we read that. Uh, well, it's interesting um, that you bring up that Cap is the one that's maintaining that they lost all of these um, uh, evidentiary records. Camp is an ex officio on the Senate Intelligence Committee, right under uh, Dianne Feinstein. Now, you can be sure if it was some plebeian out there that uh, had some uh, incriminating emails, they wouldn't lose those. They'll find those somehow. But, uh, you know, if you're part of the Confederacy, uh, those laws, I guess, just don't apply to you. Well, course under the you know back to 1929 Geneva okay agents were immune okay it's no longer the case though so uh, and the, you know this this stems from um, investigation that's going on uh, involving Lo Lois Lerner um, Oh, and how does this go exactly? I believe it had to do with the uh, uh, IRS that was cracking down on Tea Party members. Right. As and I it, recall. And uh, it's all a production. It's all a production because the IRS came in and um, said that if you file under their forms, they're going to audit you immediately if you attempt to expatriate, blah, blah, blah. So they've got everything sewn up again. Um, Lois Lerner is a presentation to put fear into all of the citizen sheeple. Um, of course, in Michigan, it's not just Camp, it's Carl Levin as well, who's the ex official member of the Senate Intelligence Committee. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's 13 months into the investigation, and that's what the end of the article says. It says, you know, and, and, and now they reveal the key emails from the time of the targeting has right. been lost. Right, they lost all the evidence. Darn the luck. <laughs> yeah, doggone it, man. I guess we're just going to have to go uh, rack up some more charges on some plebeians to make up the difference. Right, and they're doing that in um, Massachusetts. And they have been on this child, um, and this has been circulating for several months now, on Justina Pelletier. And the court system is tricking her out like nobody's business. This child has been through everything you can imagine. The family has been through everything you can imagine. From the dailycheeple.com, I believe it was yesterday. Oh, today. It says, is this even America? A teen ripped from her family by medical authorities begs to go home. Now, this has been playing out for months and months and months and months. This is the Department of Health and Human Services which stems from the Office of Population Affairs, the same Office of Population Affairs that Dr. Henry Kissinger created back in 1975 after his Memorandum 200 to the National Security Council that said depopulation should be the highest priority of all foreign, mil or foreign policy uh, towards the third world. Now, the American sheeple, the American mind, has been led to believe that they can never be third world. Everybody's broke. Everybody is in foreclosure. Yeah, this is the third world now. Everybody's going hungry. The inflation rate has been increasing. Gas prices are toward $4 a, a gallon. Food, which they don't even include on the inflation rates, is... Uh, Increasing at a higher rate than uh, than most everything when and that is a necessity. Right, and and the, the whole premise of everything is driving into third world. Third world countries do not start out third world; they end up that way after attorneys raise it to the ground and burn it to the ground. And you're seeing another recall on beef this week. Um, recalls, beef jerky, I think right, it was, wasn't it? Right, and last week. And the week before. Oh, they're endless. And the week before, and the bunny millions match, and pounds and of, ca uh, you know, food. Cattle killed by the uh, uh, Bureau of Land Management out at the Bundy Ranch uh, fiasco. Right, and all of these things are are in line with creating that quote third world policy, and it's so soft sell that people are not realizing what's going on. They're actually limiting your 
resources at the same time they're limiting your transportation or transportability um, they're making you uh, fear flying by molesting everybody when they go to the airport uh, scanning everybody at the airport sinking ships uh, derailing trains uh, buses are going off embankments and cliffs and buses are being crashed into by um, dump trucks and all sorts of things are going on allowing you to be put into your places and years ago one of the brothers summed this up succinctly he said you know what the human being lives in a little bubble called a house from that bubble the human being goes out to work 40 hours a week and is in another bubble when it gets to the office it travels from that bubble into a vessel called a vehicle or car a moving vessel back to its home bubble and that's what the human being is being indoctrinated to do constantly day after day after day and the entertainment available the uh, functionality available the uh, six flags disney and all of these things are just little bubbles extensions but in all in all, the human being living in that FEMA camp, which is controlled by governing forces, is completely and entirely predictable. It has predictable responses. It has predictable react, reactionary behavior to actions put upon it through the silent weapons. And um, under fourth generation warfare, there's nothing that's unpredictable until you step out of the mindset you realize all of the concepts that are being sold to you yeah they're snake oil salesmen and in, in, in you wonder why these creatures spend 95 percent of their time trying to convince you they're the good guys it's because uh they need to because uh <laughs> you know, and uh, to boot, you know, they're going to use your money to campaign and launch uh, TV advertisements, okay, in this war against you. You know, I mean, I don't know how many times I got to see that face of Obama popping up on an ad everywhere on these Patriot sites and these places we go to find these news stories sometimes. You know, it's just in your face over and over again Obama saves the world uh, with this nonsense and to show you how this works once again here's another example 33,000 with that's people within or we call them uh, people but we'll use that term loosely with income of more than two hundred thousand dollars paid no US income tax IRS report confirms that the best Taxpayers, those with income of $200,000 or more, continue to find legal ways to make their federal tax obligation zero dollars. Worse, the report finds that this is occurring at a pace not seen for decades. So, as uh, you know, the populace gets poorer and poorer, uh, these uh, entities at the top in, the, in bed with uh, the federal state. Uh, you know they have more and more you know all you got to do is go back and watch some of these old movies the way to depict Rome and the Senate and you know how, how all these houses of you know under the Senate you know just uh, had slaves and drank all the wine and you know enjoyed all the finer things of life while the rest of the 99.9% .9 just lived in in swallow or worse yet thrown into the gladiator pits for their amusement and of course you know the citizens were there right along with it they thought that was funny too until it was them and, and the way it's sold now football basketball volleyball tennis all of these competition sports that is the gladiators pit mm -hmm. all of these uh, business schematics climbing that ladder of success that's a gladiator pit Everybody's pit against each other, competing to rise and rise and rise and buying this ascension. And uh, Led Zeppelin said it best, she's buying the stairway to heaven. 
That is not the ascension. You cannot buy the stairway to heaven. No, but these Congress critters um, have been getting away with doing it for a long time. Until now. At your expense. Right. We're holding them accountable for human trafficking and genocide. That's what the case that I launched on the behest of every human being on the planet was about. All right? And we won that case. All right? We didn't... We certainly didn't get any agreement with, uh, you know, the United States Incorporated U.S. District Court, of Court course. Council. But we threw we we threw everything at the uh, House of Lords, the IMF, uh, the Secretary of State was kept in the loop. There was no arguments, and uh, we got the agreed entry with Northern Holding Corporation. Right. Was an important thing you have to look at. And upon the declaration of their death, they were declared dead. They are being held accountable. They are under charges. Attorneys are no longer with that uh, oath that protects them in any way, as everybody's seeing in the mainstream media. And so they're um, they're on probation. Right. They are in probate. And that's where they had the human being forever declaring them as civilly dead with the Declaration of Independence. As much resistance as we are seeing, we're, you, we're seeing uh, also on the other side some accountability and, uh, uh, you know, the agreed entry working in action with these, like, these attorneys are now getting arrested, judges getting arrested, lawmakers getting arrested. One of the first ones, it was so beautiful, that one that was the attorney that was accused of bank robbery and shot in both legs. He was injured, brought into law, and born again. You know, that is his second death. Unfortunately, the attorneys are going to uh, work like the Dickens to uh, throw the cops under the bus in their stead. Let the cops be the fall guy, even though they're just following these attorney uh, uh you know, procedures and policy that's handed down to them. Right, and that's why we're here. We're here to protect humanity regardless. That's all we want. So, again, we're we're looking for law enforcement that will adhere to the public law. The orders are there. This is all a done deal if we can just get the law enforcement to stand up for humanity and be human beings, not policy enforcement for banks to go in and kill people on the behest of attorneys for uh, some alleged uh, commercial crime. Under 27 CFR 72.11, and all of this occurs through patriotism, the action of heraldry itself. You can go to, uh, it's www.tioh.hqda.pentagon.com. Dot mill, and you'll find the Institute of Heraldry, and you know it says on uh, the headline "Supporting Our Nation," which under uh, 28 U.S.C. Uh, 1603, you see "nation" is a corporation, uh, providing uh, heraldic services to the office of the president. You. Dot S dot government agencies and armed forces. Welcome to the Institute of Heldry website. The purpose of this site is to provide information to United States heraldic entitlements, how they are displayed and how and why they are worn. Symbology. This is the thing that you were warned against. Have no God before me do not patronize demigods do not worship a flag jesus did not carry a flag jesus was not under any bars he didn't have stripes or a uniform badge or any of that symbology that sold to the average sheeple through such as the institute of heraldry Jesus said, call no man your father, not even Christ. 
and that man that Lincoln created in the 14th Amendment, that person has taken precedence since the 1947 National Security Act securing foreign nations far and above human beings. This is genocide. You are in the war. It's just sold to you so softly, so quietly. We call it soft sell. It's quiet. And this is why an important part of the process is to divest yourself of all these titles. Quit taking up titles, starting with that last name. Anything else under there, uh, you know. The family name. Let's explain the family name, that last name. A family name, family the word, means that that describes a new genus or species. The <laughs> word gender stems from the word genus. Subscribing that, that thing, a female or a male, is a new species. It's not relative to your actual state of being. It's a means of polarizing you and setting you apart from the rest of humanity, the rest of the garment, the rest of the body. And Jesus said that so often. You are all members of the body of Christ. Members, arms, legs, eyes. What I cannot do, Bo can do. What Bo cannot do, I can do. We're just members of the same body. We're all of the same garment. Until attorneys come in and teach you concepts that say that you are not. And now they're telling everybody that they're gay and straight and black and white and brown and Muslim and Christian and Catholic and Jew. All of these things separate the members of the same body and call them something else new species that have patents on them because attorneys have come up with the language through the action of psychological warfare and for anybody out there that is interested in this subject please go listen to you can hear it on audiobook to leviathan by thomas hobbes h-o-b-b-e-s and, and I play that as well right here on No Borders uh, when we have the opportunity. Um, but again, I mean, the, these things, the, the rabbit hole, eventually it's going to end. Please don't be overwhelmed. I know that we give out a lot of, of information and, and all of these things. But it is for your well-being, not the best interest, not something subscribed to under policy. But your overall well-being, and that's what Jesus wanted the most. Second Corinthians 13, he says just farewell. Farewell. He didn't say goodbye. He said, please, be well. Go forward and just be well. Stop being in a probated state. You have done nothing wrong. Stop subscribing as a debtor. And when you subscribe to various titles and, and entitlements, you're saying that on one side you're bad, your credit's bad, or, or something's bad about you. You have done no harm. You have done no wrong. Just be well. Yeah, it's really uh, getting critical out there that people get this information, that police get this information, before the attorneys throw them all under the bus and they just replace all the police with military or something like that as overseers uh, of the bankruptcy of the uh, trustees of the bankruptcy right. and the overseers in Sparta were called the E-Force now they're called the Federal Magistrates and Judges Association so uh, again, people, it's it's time. It's now or never. I mean, the attorneys are racing human beings towards extinction, and uh, you can't take much more of this. You see how they're ramping things up. Uh, the wars never stop. 
uh, and it's all about offsetting their congressional bankruptcy. Also, they can have more, and you can have less. That's what you're being patriotic to when you go and vote for these creatures in your local or federal governments. So that's about all the time we got tonight. Thanks for listening to the Public Law Radio here. It's heard every Friday night. And um, all I can do is, is wish you well. And uh, going to head on out of here with Alice Cooper, Grim Facts.